When it comes to early computers in the 1980s, especially computers that were targeted at the home, there were a lot of different motivations for manufacturers, whether it be for managing home finances, bills, or maybe schoolwork. But some companies focused specifically on kids, and that's where we get the Tomy Tutor. This particularly odd machine could be a cross between a TI-99 4A and maybe a Panasonic system we've seen in the past, but today we're gonna learn what this machine is, who it was for, and what it can do, all right here on Vintage Geek. I'm Aaron, welcome to Vintage Geek. If you like videos about vintage technology and computers, please like and subscribe. We make videos like this each and every week and we'd love to have your support. The Tomy Tutor was also known as a different system in Japan. It was called the Piyuta, and I hope that I'm pronouncing that right, but it was an original system created by the Tomy Toy Company back in 1982. Their whole tagline was, if you're eight years old, you can learn this machine without any adult supervision, which at the time was pretty important because computers were new and most adults in the household didn't know how to use them any more than their kids did, getting a kid access to a computer that they could learn very quickly and easily was something that had some appeal. Now, it originally started in Japan. It was manufactured by the Matsushita Company, which is the parent company of Panasonic. We've talked about Panasonic several times on the channel before as we covered the JR200U, a very, very different machine than what we're looking at today, but it's interesting to note that it came from the same manufacturer. This particular system is the Tomy Tutor, which is the American branding that came out about a year later than the Utah in Japan in 1983. And this machine is very strange because of some of the similarities that it has with the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A, which if you haven't checked out that video or are not familiar with that, please do so. You can learn a lot more about that right here on Vintage Geek. The TI-99 featured the Texas Instruments CPU chip, the TMS-9900. The Tomy Tutor actually features the same chipset but a slightly different variation with the TMS-9905 as I understand it. Internally, this this computer is very, very similar to a TI-99 4A. It has a 16-bit processor in it, which is pretty rare for the time. This particular machine is really designed to be mostly used with cartridges that had pre-made games on them, and Tomy had several of these games available. There was a lot more available for the Japanese model, as I found in doing research for this, than there was for the US one. We have some of those common US titles. The actual machine itself is pretty basic design. It's a plastic shell got a decent amount of weight to it. Kind of has this blue textured surface around a chiclet style keyboard, which we've talked about here on the channel before. It's certainly not one of my favorite designs, but it does get the job done. And the keys seem to move fairly well. I'm not sure how well they'll register when we start typing, but we're gonna find out. The keyboard arrangement looks fairly standard. We've got some arrow keys up here at the top. They're all in one place and kind of separate from the rest of the keyboard. I also noticed that there's a uh, musical note on one of these keys, which is kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before on other systems. Maybe there was a music cartridge that went with the system, I don't know. You've got your cartridge slot on the top. This is where you put your pre-made game cartridges into the system. There's a power indicator on here, the branding for the Tomy Tutor at the top. Apparently they also made a version in the UK called the Grandstand Tutor. On the back panel of the system, we can see that there is an expansion slot of some kind. This is kind of similar to the TI-99 4A. And one of the interesting things I found in researching this is that when they originally came out with the brochures and advertising for this particular computer, Computer, there was a lot of components in their original advertising that never existed. They had an entire expansion chassis and a disk drive and other things that were similar to the TI-99 4A, but apparently never existed, were never manufactured. No one can find any real evidence of those having existed except for the brochure, which is always fun to see some of those kind of early vaporware things that manufacturers put out there. There's a nine pin port for the joysticks. Now, I do not have the original Tomy Tudor joysticks. I'm working on trying to get a pair of those. So we're gonna try the TI-99 joysticks we have and hope that those will work. We have a cassette connector here for loading and saving programs in basic, I assume. And then we have an audio and a video jack for composite video, which is kind of handy. A lot of the systems didn't have that at the time. And then you have your standard RF out, which would be used for channel three or four on the television screen. So definitely compatible with your home TV at the time, would have made it an easy price point for families to get into, especially if they're trying to show their kids how to use computers. On the side, we just have a very simple on-off power switch. 
nothing fancy here, and nothing at all on the other side. So very basic machine, there's not a lot to it. It's interesting that it does have the 16-bit processor, and as I understand it, it also has 16K of RAM, so a fairly capable system. I'm really curious what this system is going to do when we plug it in and get it working, so let's get to it. We've got our Tomy Tutor 16-bit graphic computer system plugged in and ready to go here. I am going to be trying the composite video and separate audio outputs going into my Commodore monitor here, and we do have a couple of uh, TI-99 style joysticks plugged in, as I assume that they are compatible based on what I've read, but I don't know for sure. Let's power it on and see what we get. Ah, tell me, 16-bit graphic computer. I like the colors, it's looking good so far. Definitely reminiscent of the TI-99 for sure though, that opening screen is very similar with the color display. Let's press any key and see what happens. Okay, so it takes us into a menu first and foremost. Looks like you can go to graphic or basic. I'm not sure what graphic's gonna do. I assume basic just means you can start programming. I'm gonna go to that really quick though because I wanna see what some of these special keys do on the keyboard that I was looking at earlier. All right, so we've got a green screen for the basic prompt here. I'm just gonna try a simple statement here, but I do wanna see what this musical note looks like if we type it on the screen. It definitely looks like the, the flat symbol for music. There's another one here that's three X's with a line under it, and I guess that's just underscore. This at symbol looks awfully weird too, but it looks normal on the screen. Basic print statement works, kind of universal basic commands. As I mentioned, I don't know what particular flavor this is of basic, but it looks functional, and I wanna see what this graphics mode is about. Well, that's interesting. So you can just move around in this entire grid of the screen, oh, and it's giving numeric values for each one of the squares on the, on the grid. That's pretty cool. I am not entirely sure how this is used, but it looks like a really interesting way to make graphics. I'm not sure if this goes into creating sprites or how you would use this functionality. Definitely a, an interesting tool that comes right out of the box, no cartridge required. We have original games for the Tomy Tutor system. These are the ones that came with it. They're all cartridge based, nothing is on cassette. So I figure it's worth trying these out. First game we're gonna try is called Scramble. And that is literally all the information I have about this game. Ah, and then it gives you an additional menu item for cartridge, cool. All right, now does the joystick work? Uh-oh. Oh no! <laughs> wait, okay, so that, that's making it fire. How do I move? Oh wait, okay, that's, oh wait. Okay, everything's backwards. I don't know what's gonna control this one though. This one doesn't do anything. So we've effectively proven that the other joysticks do not work with the Tomy Tutor. You must have the original joysticks for compatibility. And thankfully, I have been able to source a couple of these. Anyway, hopefully now we can play Scramble effectively now that we have the proper controller. So let's give this a shot. We're gonna do one player. Well, this definitely works more predictably with this controller. Oh no, I missed the oil derrick. Got him though. Got one, all right. Oh, the ground's changing color. I don't know, what are these things? Flying saucers? No! Spoke too soon. Clearly I need to be better at uh, my escape maneuvers. <laughs> Seems a little frantic if I'm honest. Oh no! Oh man. I'm out, of, I'm out of jets. I will say that uh, it works much more predictably with the right controller, at least I can move it in the way you would think it would move. Now we've got a game called Cave Crawlers. I can't really say what the game is about or the objective, but I'm assuming that it's gonna have to do something with crawling through a cave. Oh, we're just going right into gameplay, huh? Well, we're in some kind of maze, or I guess a cave. So, so far I can go front and back, but I can't turn either side. Oh, so this is the map, and then this is the three-dimensional view, I guess? This is timed, and there's a bar that shows how much air I have, which is a little bit anxiety-inducing, I'm gonna be honest, especially since I can't figure out how to move. Do I have some way of firing something? Oh God, <laughs> turn around. I am not doing well in the cave so far. Oh no! So uh, the Cave Crawlers is definitely uh, beyond my level of expertise. Now we have another game entry called Torpedo Terror. Again, no documentation. We're just gonna go straight into it. Well, this is kind of a fun load screen here. Although it's really not telling me a lot about what we're gonna be doing. I wish there was some way I could pick amateur, but the A doesn't seem to work, so. Professional it is. Oh God. <laughs> oh wow, this, this, is, this is aggressive. Hey, I got somebody. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a mulligan on this one. The fanfare is nice. Ah! <laughs> they just come right at you. There is no delay at all. I guess avoidance is the name of this game. <laughs> you just steer right into their ship. Great theory there. This game is hard, but it is fun because it's fast paced. I like that. And honestly, their little sprite graphics look pretty decent. Oh no. <laughs> 
and now we have a game called Traffic Jam. And actually online it seemed like this game may have been one of the favorites of people that had the system, so I'm curious to see what this game is like. Okay, all right, looks like we got a little city map here. All right, so it's moving already. I don't have control over actually where it starts moving from. There was definitely a game for the TI-99 that was similar to this. Not sure what it was that I just hit, but it wasn't good. All right, so what is my objective here? Is it to basically cross all the paths, or do I need to go to these letters? Oh, I feel like the letters were important, but then I made a collision. I don't know that I fully understand the objective here. I assume I'm supposed to be collecting certain things from the map without getting hit. I got a bonus, so I guess I got enough letters to count for something. It looks good, and it sounds good. The music's fun, the uh, pacing is good. Time for another entry in the Tommy Tudor game line. This one's called Jungler. I'm just gonna say the obvious here. This does not look like a jungle. So now I'm curious as to where the name came from. This looks like some kind of centipedes or something. All right. So, how do I? Is there like weapons or something? Well, somehow I killed that one by default. He ran into some kind of wall. <laughs> so I guess every time you shoot them, it takes away one of their elements, their little centipede type of thing. Back. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Does not appear that you can hit them from certain angles. You have to be behind them, I guess? Come on. Oh no. My high score is 1500, given the fact that there's a couple of extra zeros there, I'm assuming you can do far better than that. This entry in the Tommy Tutor game line is actually one that was available on other systems as well. This one's called Puyan. Alright, what am I controlling here? Alright, so I'm moving this thing up and down. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so you're trying to knock these guys out. Oh, did not realize there were going to be enemies coming from the right. <laughs> That made a surprise aspect of the game. Okay. Feels like there's a lot of things to watch in this game. You gotta watch the enemies coming from the left. You gotta watch things happening from the right. Ah! Well, that was a rousing first game. <laughs> These little guys are throwing rocks. I'm not sure what the things are above them that we're shooting. Are those balloons? There's just a lot going on in this game, it feels like. These control pads are becoming a bit annoying. The response time, especially on the up on the pad, is uh, not great. Now see, these guys are going to start coming up the ladders to the right now, I guess. Oh boy. <laughs> this is not the game for me. I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and put that out there. Next up in our line of Tommy Tudor games is a game called Deep Six. Oh, that guy was underwater. Nice. All right, so I appear to be some kind of diver. There's a lot of fish swimming around. I'm trying to figure out, is that actually a fish or a submarine? The big thing. Because it has a... Uh, it appears to have a gun on top of it, which... I got him! This one's not great with the control pad movement either. It seems like it, there's a lot of delay. There's even a delay when you hit them. It pauses for a second. Three in a row. This is the best success I've had with the Tomy game yet. <laughs> there is apparently an air bar, and I don't know if that just keeps going down or if you get more when you shoot enemies. Oof. Narrowly avoided that missile heading right at me. Honestly though, 5700, this is, this is definitely by far the best game for me in this system. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? Oh, I'm in space now? Wait. Hold on. That was kind of a delayed death. Things just really took a turn in this game. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, you know what? I got 7,600 points. I'm just going to take that as a win. One of the other common games from what I've read for the Tommy Tutor system was a game called Hyperspace, which was kind of a space shooter, typical arcade game experience. But one thing I found very interesting about the system is that in Japan, they released an alternate version of this game that was actually licensed by the Walt Disney Company for the movie Tron. We actually do have a copy of Tron that we obtained from someone in Japan. I will have just just as much chance of being able to play this effectively as probably any of the other titles we've looked at so far. Ooh. Alright, so, so far I don't really see any specific Disney branding. I also didn't see a, any particular kind of load screen that indicates that it's Tron. Oh, interesting. So it seems like you can move around on each one of these squares on the screen when you just hit left or right, but that's kind of all you can do other than fire. I feel like that sound effect's gonna haunt my dreams now. Run and gun! Run and gun! <laughs> I need some kind of instruction manual for this game. I do not understand how this is supposed to work. I mean, maybe I am doing it exactly right. I'm just terrible at it, I'm not sure. But the fact that it seems to move in reverse from what you would think the direction would be is very strange. 
So Tron for the Tommy Tudor is pretty intense and uh, I don't fully understand it. Overall, it's a little bit too challenging for a player such as myself. I'm gonna have to get a little bit better at the Tommy Tudor and the uh, controllers here to uh, make this a little bit better gameplay. But overall, it's a fun system. I don't really understand exactly who this was targeted to. Clearly, it was designed to show kids how to use a computer for the first time. But it was fun to get the system out and to be able to play with it and to get the original controller so that we could play the games definitely made a lot of uh, improvement as well. And I'm glad that we have it here as part of the Vintage Geek Museum. If you like what we're doing here, if you like vintage technology, be sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we grow. Also, if you want to get a great t-shirt like the one I'm wearing today or perhaps a coffee mug or other accessories, you can check out our merch. There's a link in the description. It's got all of that great merch and items for Vintage Geek. Until next time, I'm Aaron, and this has been Vintage Geek. Thank you.